Excuse me? Are you Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Hi, I'm Janice, the temp. From Permanent Temps. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late. The train was, um... What size jacket, then? Uh, small? Small, says the late girl. You can put that on. Okay. See this door? The lock is broken. It won't stay locked. Not that it matters. There's nothing inside but an empty closet. See that? Yeah. 
empty. But maintenance can't fix it until tomorrow. So I need you to stand here. Now, if anybody comes down here, anybody gets lost, starts wandering around, I need you to make sure they don't open this door. Okay. You're like a goalie. You block them. Got it? Yeah. That jacket is way too big. I know. Way too big. If you got in here on time, I could have gotten you a small. The smalls are the first to go. I apologize. Ah, it doesn't matter. No one's gonna come down here anyway. Get to work. stilts inside. Late for what? Well, my work party. You didn't say anything about a work party. Uh, yeah, I did. Do I have to go? Yes. Shit. I mean, look, I told you everyone's was gonna be in suits, see? What did I say? I mean, can you at least take the hat off? Hi! Hi! Who my bonus already? Really? Again? S class. 500. Black. Leather. Full of lily. It's great. Beautiful car. <laughs> Can I get a whiskey neat, please? Look who dressed up for the party. <laughs> I saw I got a new plasma. Bitch in. 50 inch or full HD surround everything. You ever watch porn on it? Oh, dude. I was watching this one. This bitch is wearing this little thong, and the zits on her ass are like this big. And high def, so raunchy. Nice. Hey, man, there's a lady right here, so. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> so it's 50 inches. How much does that cost you? Yeah, like three grand. Oh, well, that's not bad. You're kidding, right? Excuse me? Are you excuse me? $3,000 for a TV? Ever heard of books? No, we didn't have those at Harvard. <laughs> Tim, can I talk to you for a sec? But Pauline, who is this guy? He, um, he's, he's just kidding. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding. He's kidding. Tim. What's on your neck anyway? Is that makeup? Yeah, it's makeup. It's silver makeup. <laughs> the dude's wearing makeup. <laughs> we need to have a talk, Janice. About what? To be frank, I don't think this is working out too well. What do you mean? We get a lot of complaints about you. What kind of complaints? Just complaints, people not happy. D do you want me to read you some? Let's see. Uh, okay. She seems distracted and disinterested. Her heart's not in it, and her head's in the clouds. Sometimes she reminds me of a speaking spell. Do you have any idea what that means? It doesn't matter. The point is, we pride ourselves here on a reputation for smart, reliable, hardworking temps, okay? I'm reliable, George. Just hang on, let me finish. You are reliable, yes, and you're a nice person, but you're not personable. What do you mean? What do I mean? Um, have you ever seen Three's Company? The TV show? Yeah, you know Janet, the roommate? She is an example of what I'm talking about. She has got a lot of charisma. I mean, people want to see her again and again and again. That's why the show lasted so long. I mean, I watch her every night. So what you're saying is that you want me to be more like Janet from Three's Company? I mean, I am saying that, but I'm not really saying that because what I'm really saying is, you know, you're fired. That's what I'm actually saying, you're fired.
Okay. Here is a song for the only one She know that she never knew You're still looking for The softest things you never quite see But you know they are true Let them carry you There for you Hi, I'm calling about the job listing in the paper today. Oh, really? Okay, thank you. Hey, Janice, got a second? Sure, Craig. Okay, um, how do I say this? The rent is due on the first. I know. Really? because your rent usually arrives in my box around the 20th, and that won't work. I know. I'm sorry, Craig. I'm trying. Look, times are tough. I get it, okay? But there are certain facts of life we all have to live by. Why is the rent due on the first of the month? It beats me. It, it just worked out that way, you know? Uh, someone uh, invented months, and then someone invented rent, and then someone decided that rent is due on the first day of the month. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh. No, it's... um. I understand. Um, I'll figure it out. Thank you. Okay. Close. Oh. I have a segment on Nine News called Man on the Street. Anyway, um, I'm wondering if you'd be interested in being interviewed. Hello? Oh, right, you gotta... Okay. Give me some money. Alright, interested? Good news. Okay, listen to this. Today, this guy, I'm downtown. It's a slow day, but that's not important. The point is, I'm gonna be on TV. Did you hear me? I'm gonna be on a TV show. I'm gonna be on a TV show. I thought you hated TV. Yeah. I do, not this kind, though. What kind? This is educational. It's on the news. Oh. 
Okay. Wow. Try to contain your enthusiasm, Pauline. What's up, Mark? Tim. You're all silver. <laughs> I'll be right there. What's your brother doing here? I'm leaving you, Tim. You're... Wait, what? Are you coming back? No. You're leaving. Where's your suitcase? I don't need a suitcase. This isn't a movie. I don't understand. I'm sick of it, Tim. I'm sick of the robot. I'm sick of the struggle. This again? The struggle's a part of the art, Pauline. Van Gogh never sold a painting. Tim, you're not Van Gogh, OK? I'm not saying I'm an artist, but people have called me an artist. <clears throat> you know what? I do need a suitcase. If it looks like a duck and acts like a duck, then it's a duck. What's a duck? I'm a duck. What are you talking about? If it quacks and has web feet and feathers, then it's a duck, babe. What are you talking about? I'm talking about me. But I'm not. See, I am talking about us. I am talking about leaving you, and you're talking about ducks. Because I thought you believed in me. I never believed in you, Tim. I just thought it was charming. I'll be in the car. Hey, guy. What the hell's going on out there? Can I give you some advice, man to man, do you mind? Because so I really like you. But you know what I see when I look at you? You're 30-something, you're poor, my sister is leaving you. You got no real future to speak of. I mean, you know why that is? Well, look, I'll tell you why that is. It's because people weren't meant to live like this. Uh, painted up like a metal guy. There's a reason the entire population gets up in the morning and clogs the freeways, because they got to go to work. That's part of life. It always has been. You know? You're a farmer. <laughs> I mean, whether you like it or not, you're a farmer. And you have got to plow the fields. What fields? You know what I'm saying. <sighs> you think I want to sit behind a desk in a little room and push a pencil around the paper all day? Hell no. But I do it. Why? <laughs> you know that song by the Little River Band? Have you heard about the Lonesome Loser? Great song. <laughs> Well, Tim, if you're not careful, you're gonna end up like the guy in that song. You're a farmer. Plow the fields.
Why'd you ring the doorbell? I don't know. It's so weird, just walk in. Did you bring the dips? Yeah. Hey, Janice. Honey, you've got to come hear Larry's wisdom tooth story. Okay, we'll be there in a minute. Hey, Brian. I want you to meet someone. Come what? On. No, no, I don't, I don't want to. Oh, come here. Tell us I wasn't really going to stay. Yeah, because I'm not feeling well. You're fine. No, I there really, is. I... Steps? You gotta follow him. All right, let's go. No, no, I'm not feeling good. Yes, you don't right. need to Just take off your jacket. Stop, Stop it. it. Doug. Hey. This is my sister I was telling you about. Oh, hey, Jill's sister. <laughs> All right, you two have fun. Hey, I'm Doug Duncan. Hi, I'm Janice. Hey, Janice. Hi. That's a really pretty sweater that you have on. Oh. Is that wool? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Well, it feels like wool. Is it itchy? Uh, not really. I once had a wool sweater. It was really itchy. I almost wore it when I was flying to London, uh, first class for a book signing. I'm an author. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I guess they fly at first class to these things. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm lucky I didn't wear the sweater because when I got there, I had to go right from the airport to a live interview at the BBC. So, it's the British Broadcasting Company. Right. Anyway, uh, what do you do? Um, I don't really know how to answer Corporation. that. Corporation. <laughs> British Broadcasting Corporation. I always do that. Um, but it was tough, you know, it was like three hours. And had I worn the wool sweater, I would have been like, you know, itchy much. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's serious. You can't be itching on camera. It's like a big no-no. So, um, do you have any hobbies? One of my hobbies is helping kids. Blind kids build a church. Residents on the south side are finding themselves knee-deep in sewage after a pipe broke near the corner of Washington Boulevard and Main Street. City officials have shut down Washington in order to fix the problem, and we're told construction could keep the road closed through the new year. Oh, that's going to make it rough on some of our commuters. Mm -hmm. well, let's take this over to Hal Baker, our man on the street, who actually isn't on the street today. He's in the studio. Hal? That's right, John. Thank you. So some of you may have seen my next guest out on the street some afternoon and wondered, who the heck is that guy? Well, we're here to find out. His name is Tim Tucker, and he's known as the Giant Mechanical Man. Hi, Tim. Hi. Hey, that's quite an outfit you got there, huh? Oh, thanks. I've, I've been uh, sort of refining it over the years. Well, that brings me to my first question. Why'd you choose to start doing this uh, robot thing? Why did I choose to do it? Uh, this just happens to be my talent. Interesting. And I feel like... Um, um, and I also, maybe that people would, you know, brighten people's lives up. What do you mean? I guess I feel like modern life can be alienating and it can be like you're mindlessly walking through it like a robot. And you can feel lost. I guess I just want people to know that they're not crazy, okay? Everybody at home, everybody watching the show today, you're not crazy. I mean, life is crazy, right? Maybe if you see a giant mechanical man, you know, wandering down the street towards you, you, you know, maybe that could put it into perspective, everything, you know? You know what would be good for your routine? Break dancing. Break dancing. Like the wave, can you can you do the wave? No, I don't do that. I don't do the wave. You know what I mean? The wave. No, yeah, no, I know <laughs> what it is. I just don't. I don't do it. Right, right. Uh, I used to be able to moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> no, That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm. I don't do that sort of stuff. The wave or the moonwalk. I'm not that kind of. Oh, well, you should. It's fun. All right, dude, are we, are we done? Uh, 
uh, listen, I, I need a place to stay for a little while. Why? Did you get evicted or something? Yeah, I might. Might? Where are you calling from? Um, I found a payphone. Ugh, I've been trying to call you. What happened to your cell phone? It got turned off. What? How did that happen? I'm just, I'm having a hard time right now, Jill. What's the matter, Janice? I just need a place to stay for a while, okay? Yeah, okay. That's fine. I mean, you can stay here. We'll, we'll come get you tomorrow. Okay, thanks. I saw you on television. Hey, I saw you on television. I feel like those people you were talking about. Like I was just born into this life and I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. Like I'm supposed to have it all figured out, but I don't have it all figured out. I just feel lost. Anyway, thanks. you a little welcome gift I guess you think you are really going to like it oh my god it's like the coolest gift ever what is it well it's something that is one of a kind totally totally unique yeah wow what is it guess what guess I mean you'll never guess but just just try to guess okay um wow you want me to guess um is it a hat I don't know. Hat. It is uh, definitely not. Why a would hat. you guess that? Why? I don't know. I. You said to guess. I don't. No, really. I mean, Janice, please. Once for once in your life, just take yourself seriously. All right. Your life is upside down. It's in shambles, and you guess a hat. I'm taking it seriously. Okay. Maybe we should just give it to her. Fine. Just give it to her. Close your eyes. All right. It is this. Oh, it's a book. Yes! Doug Duncan. Remember him from the party? Yeah. I uh, clean his teeth, Janice. He wanted us to give it to you. And he even signed it on the inside. Open it. What does it say? Dear Janice, how about we discuss over dinner? Doug Duncan. Isn't that awesome? You should definitely go out with him, Janice. Absolutely. I mean, this is the answer. You know, he's amazing, and he'll teach you how to talk, because sometimes you're not very good at that. Well, thank you.
Well, I've got an opening of sanitation. Sanitation? Yeah, it's pretty simple. You just sweep out the cages, take out the trash. Kid drops his popcorn, you clean it up. Does cold weather bother you? No, I'm used to it. OK, good. Oh, the other downside is you got to clean the toilets, too. It's all cleaning toilets at this point. I'm sorry to hear that. OK, then, well, why don't we just get you a uniform, give you a broom, and you'll be on your way. OK. Well, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. work here? No, I'm trapped here. What? Miserable human being. <laughs> That's what they call this exhibit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm looking for the employment office. I'm just looking for my coin. The employment office? OK, right down there, past the monkeys on the right. You can't miss it. Thanks. How about concessions? I mean, you're overqualified for the job, but if you're desperate, I can give you that. I am desperate. OK, then. Hey there. Hi. I think I saw you yesterday. I was a guy cleaning out the fountain. Oh, yeah. They let you out? Nope. Nice game. <laughs> so it looks like you got the job. Yep. What do you do? I sell these little plastic gorillas filled with grape juice. Uh, yep. Yep. I've cleaned up a lot of those. Hopefully, it's just temporary till I figure out my life. I get it. It's depressing, right? What do you mean? I mean, human beings evolved over billions of years. Out of the swamp, we stood up, made fire, built shelter, invented the wheel. For what? So you could stand in a funny hat and sell grape juice gorillas? Kind of trying not to think about it like that. I'm sorry. Don't worry, you're not the only one that's trying to figure out their life. <laughs> Gotta have winning. Winning conversations. In conversations. Okay. Are we having one right now? <laughs> My sister gave it to me. Any good? I don't know. I guess I'm having dinner with the author, so I figured I should, you know, read it. 
Right. All right, well, got to get back to the grind. All right, see you later, Janice. See you later. Watch out for the polar bear. Hi. What's in the gorillas? Some kind of sugar drink? It's grape juice. Oh, you want a grape juice, honey? I want two grape juice. <laughs> nope, just one. How much are they? Six dollars. Wow. All right, just one. Okay, hold on. You said this was grape juice, lady. It isn't grape juice. It isn't? No, it's grape drink. I want my money back. Can I have it, Debbie? No, you can't, honey. But I want it! Too much sugar. I'm sorry. Gosh, Indian giver! Whoa! Where did you hear that? Thanks a lot, lady. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You need to get a life. What are you doing in here, Janice? I'm really busy. I'm trying to staff a catering gig downtown. Well, I could do that, George. No, damn it. Now, come on, don't do this, Janice. Don't make me feel guilty. I told you this is not the job for you. Please, George, I need to pay my rent. We all need to pay our rent, Janice. We're just... What is the matter with you? Nothing. Why are you doing that thing with your mouth? Nothing, George. I just need to pay my rent. What the hell? Your teeth, Janice, they're falling out of your mouth. I don't know what's happening to me, George. Your teeth are falling out of your face. <laughs> Good morning, Janice. Did where? Oh no, I was just joking. Huh? What did I miss? Oh no, no, I was just joking. I was just making a joke. Oh, oh. <laughs> I missed the spot. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's funny. I don't know, maybe it's not. No, no, it's it's hysterical. It's really funny. Hey, he just poked the monkey. What? That guy. How would he like it if someone did that to him? I'm gonna find out. Come on. Hey! Hey! What? Don't poke the monkey, man. Hey, chill out. I'm not hurting. I saw what you did. You poked him. I did not poke the monkey. Nice hat. Yes, you did. How would you like it if someone poked you? Do you want to poke me? No, no, but I'm gonna poke you, you asshole. Yeah, but you'd like that. <laughs> there. Jesus. How do you like it? You like that? Go, Jack. You like that? Go, Jack. You like that? 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 Don't poke the monkey. Monkey! You okay? He was poking at the baby. I know, I know, I know. I love that. There you go. There you go. Don't poke the fucking monkey. Did you see his face? I mean, he was freaked out. I love when you grabbed it out of my hand. He, he was totally freaked out. Don't poke the monkey. Don't poke the monkey. Do you think we're going to get fired? No. I mean, I can't afford to get fired. We'll be all right. Well, they need to rearrange that habitat or it's just going to happen again. You should tell her that. I don't want to. Well, first of all, you guys are a hell of a security team. But second. Sonia, look, if you're going to fire anyone, fire me. Okay, I started it. Janice should not be fired. I'm not gonna fire anybody. 
Look, between you and me, I'm glad you guys stuck up for the monkey, but in the future, let's just call security, okay? Okay. 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 I think Janice had a suggestion, though. Yeah, tell her what? Tell her that thing you were just telling me. What is it? Um, well, it's just that um, right now, the way the habitat is arranged, mm -hmm. uh, people can get right up to the rail, which is right where the monkeys sleep. And if we move the rail back or put in a tree or something to give the monkeys more privacy, mm -hmm. It would just be better because when people see a sleeping monkey, they can't help but yell at it. She's right. I mean, some of these people are just wacko. We gotta protect the animals better. Especially the babies. I, I did not realize that they were so exposed. It's wide open. Well, we're gonna have to fix that then. I'll call the habitat coordinator. Thanks, Janice. You're welcome. Nice. Webster's Dictionary defines the word conversation as the oral exchange of ideas, opinions, and observations. Hi, I'm Doug Duncan, and thank you so much for allowing me to be your tour guide today through the Conversation Nation. So hey, are you guys ready to go on your tour, or what? Great. Yeah. Thank you. I guess in order to have a meaningful conversation, you got to have what? What do you need? A desire to speak. But in order to have a desire to speak, you got to have something to say. So where do we find these things, huh? Where are these things to say? Are they in your giant oversized purse, ma'am? I don't think they are. <laughs> I'll look. <laughs> um, how about this handsome gentleman here? What is your name, sir? Toby. OK, Toby. Would you be willing to be my volunteer in a little experiment I'm going to do today? Sure. Well, you say that now, Toby, but just wait. <laughs> just kidding. Come on up here with me, Toby. Now, Toby, have you ever been on a date? Um, once or twice. OK. And what would you guys talk about? Um, just stuff and, you know, stuff like that. Just stuff and, you know, stuff like that. Wow. Sounds fascinating. <laughs> But seriously, Toby, that's why you're here today, to learn the art of eloquence. Now, I want you all to pretend that I'm a beautiful woman. Boom, ch -ch boom, ch -ch boom. <laughs> and me and Toby here are on a date. What do you want to talk about, Toby? Um. Come on, Toby. I don't know. <laughs> OK, Toby, why don't you have a seat? Rule number one, people, stack the deck in your favor. If you don't know what to talk about, talk about yourself. How's everything going? Good. Good to hear. How are you? Oh. Hey, Doug. Hey. Sorry, these things can just get so nuts. Um, you, you were great up there. Oh. Yeah, you were really good, Doug. Jill, thank you. I really appreciate that compliment. Hey, Janice. Hi, Doug. Have you uh, had a chance to read my book? Yeah, it's good. I mean, I've, I've only read just a little bit of it, but it's good. Oh, well, the dinner offer still stands. <laughs> oh, OK. How about tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Um, yes, yes, yeah, she would love to. Oh, fantastic. Wow, OK. <laughs> you guys can have some winning conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Well, duty calls. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks for the tickets. And yeah, you, were great. Great. you were great. You were great. What do we got here? Oh, Toby. I was really impressed with your growth today. Oh, Doug is perfect for you. Perfect. I mean, look, your life has been on pause for so many years. I just feel like it's time for you to push the play button, you know? What is that saying? Which one? You know the one about the two kinds of people? Oh, oh the, there are two different kinds of people in the yeah. world. There, there are those who... Um, the something, something make, like, that... The, the carry... Oh, never mind. It's basically there are two remember. kinds of people in this world, and you don't want to end up the wrong kind. Right, we're just trying to help you, Janice. We're on your team. Your team, Janice. Team that pays their bills. <laughs>
You left your book in the break room. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to read it. But I did see the author's picture, and he, uh... Oh. Kind of looks like a cheese ball, right? <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm sorry for getting all Charles Darwin in the Arctic house, all that nonsense about the, the swamp. The oh, it wasn't nonsense. It kind of was, though. I don't know, it made sense. Did it? I mean, to me it did, because I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, I have no clue. No clue what I'm doing. Neither do I. But I'm talking about my life. And yeah, I don't want to sell grape juice gorillas or go out with this cheese head, but I don't know. Well, then why are you? Why am I what? Why are you selling grape juice gorillas? Because what else am I going to do? I need a job. I get it. And I'm... I'm actually living with my sister right now, and she kind of won't leave me alone. Oh. What's your job, Janice? What are your interests? Exactly. What are you doing with your life? Yeah. What's the point of you? <laughs> Why should anyone care about you? Yes, yes, you sound just like my sister. Just like my girlfriend, actually. Right. Yeah. That's funny. So, anyway. People are weird. Yeah, they are. <laughs> um, well, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, cool. Okay. I meant ex-girlfriend, by the way. What? When I said that, I, I meant to say ex-girlfriend. Oh, yeah, I didn't even. No, no, yeah, that's it was cool. Just, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, there she is. I've written books about, you know, lots of different subjects. But you name a topic, I've written about it. Let's go ahead, pick a topic. What do you mean? Just pick a topic, any topic. Um... Diet, conversation, health, dreams, travel. Pick a topic. Health, dreams, travel. Dreams. Okay, dreams. What do you want to know about dreams? I don't, I was, I was just picking a topic. Dreams are the subconscious mind telling the conscious mind what it needs. Tell me about the latest dream that you had. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to judge you or anything. Just uh, tell me about the latest dream you had. OK. Well, um, I was at this job interview, and my teeth start falling out. Wait, what? In the dream, my teeth are falling out. Holy shit. That's crazy. I mean, you must be a crazy person. <laughs> Just kidding. Seriously, that's pretty messed up. Um, you know what? Just buy my book on dreams. It'll tell you everything that you need to know. Now, what is for dinner? Ooh, they have the cheesecake. There's also this box under the bed with some letters. And... There's a box. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you missing a shoe? Shoe, yeah. Thank you. I think there's some books. I also wanted to apologize to you. For what? You don't have to apologize. Um, for when I said it about that I never believed in you. Oh, that. It was harsh, and I'm sorry. It's OK. I'm, I'm going to quit that stuff anyway. Nobody really seems to get it. Tim, you can't quit. What? No. It's a worthless skill, I get it. It's not, it's not like I'm a piano player or a painter or something. It's got no value, I get it. 
I was angry when I said all that, Tim. I don't think it's true. I know you're going to take this thing and it'll evolve into, I don't know, something bigger, wherever your brain takes it, because you don't see the finish line. You, you don't ever put that pressure on yourself. And, and that's so great about you. I'm really sorry. Why? Why? What? Because I let you down. And because I wasn't enough. Tim, you didn't let me down, okay? I think we just grew in different directions. But I'd still really like to be your friend. I say you gotta get in a conversation, right? You can't just knock on the door, may I come in? You gotta bust right in there. In fact, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna tell you this. I used to be horrible at conversations. What? I know. It's crazy. But I just, you know, I could talk about the weather and stupid stuff like that. But when it came to true emotion, expression of feelings, the words would just get blocked right here in the neck area. <sighs> Not anymore. Now when I want something, bang, instant words. For instance, um, gosh, I don't know. If I wanted to kiss you, I would just say, hey, I want to kiss you. Simple, just like that. Of course, I'm not saying it now. We're in a restaurant, and uh, you know, it would be weird. Plus, I wouldn't want to seem like I'm being too forward or anything. But um, I could easily say it at any moment. So be on the lookout for that. <laughs> Let's see what is for dessert tonight. Hey. You know, whiskey neat. I did a podcast, you know? I, did, I have Twitter. I did a book on. Oh, I forgot my jacket. I'll be right back. Tim. Janice, hey. Hey, what are you doing here? I was just getting a drink. You, uh, you want to join me? My jacket in a goddamn bus tub. It's got like a steak sauce stain on it or something. Uh, Doug, this is my friend Tim. Oh, what's up, bro? It's a cool hat. Thanks, bro. All right. All right, I'll see you at work tomorrow, right? Okay. Cool. Hey, Janice. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm okay, just taking a break, watching the penguins. Oh, yeah, I love these guys. Yeah. So... That was weird last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a guy, right? The author guy. Yeah, that was him. Yeah. We were just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. We should hang out. Who? You and me. OK. Yeah, like soon, like tomorrow night. You got plans tomorrow night? No. You should go to a party with me. You want to go to a party with me? OK, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> OK. Good. Try level seven. No, this is fine. Fine, sit yourself. What? 
I've got good news for you. What? I think you're gonna like what? it. What, Jill, what? Just what is the news? Doug Duncan asked Brian about you today. I guess he liked his date. Oh, yeah? Yep, and he's taking the four of us out to dinner Thursday night. Oh. And you're not saying no. I'm not letting you say no. What are you doing? Jill! Jill! You gotta burn, Janice. Doug Duncan likes it slim. It's true. And um, I also want to thank my wonderful man, Wesley. Wesley. Oh. He's always so supportive of me and makes me feel loved. And um, it's true what they say. It only takes just one person just one person to make you feel special and valid and like you belong in the world. Aww. Okay, let's have some cake. Cake. <laughs> I thought he was talking to you. No, no. Apparently, he was talking to you. He I was, didn't answer him. No, he was standing there. He's a very close talker. <laughs> he was very close. <sighs> Where were you born? Were you born here? No, I was born in Wyoming, actually. Wyoming? Mm -hmm. Wow. Good things about Wyoming. It's beautiful there. Yeah, I heard that, too. I don't really remember because I was sort of moved away when I was little. Sort of moved away? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm adopted, so I was adopted, basically. <laughs> okay. What was that like? Being adopted? Yeah. Um, it was weird because my little sister, Jill, is not adopted. So that was kind of, you know, I mean, it's fine now. But, well, when I was seven, I really wanted to grow up and move away. And I thought that growing up meant that you lose your baby teeth and you get your big ones. You know, then you're grown up. And I read in this book that if you tie a piece of string around your tooth and then you tie the other end to a doorknob, you can slam the door and your baby tooth will come out. So I tried it. And what happened? Did, did your tooth fall out? Mm -mm. No. The door slammed back into my head and I had to get three stitches. Oh, shit. It was a bad idea. Let me see. Right there. OK, I see. Right here above my eyebrow. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Why don't you look tough? Looks like you're kicking ass with mm -hmm. those stitches. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my dad would tell me to say, well, you should see the door. <laughs> you know, because anyway, I don't know. It's a dad joke, right? <laughs> Sometimes I have dreams that my 
after my teeth are falling out. Are you serious? Yeah. I have that dream. I just had that dream. It freaked me out. Uh, don't worry, it's not. It's common. People have it all the time. At least that's what they say. Do you know what it means? Well, your, you know, your teeth are for chewing or, or biting, and, you know, they're powerful. And they're falling out, so you feel powerless. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have it all the time. But you know what helps? Apple pie. Really? Yeah, it makes you feel <laughs> really powerful. Well, we should split one then. You want to split a whole pie? Okay. You want to? Do you? Yeah, excuse me. Can we get that whole pie? <laughs> Can we take the whole thing? Thank you. That looks tremendous. Thanks a lot. Wow, I can't believe she just this. gave you a whole pot. Yeah. Let's do it. Come on in. Want a beer? Uh, sure. Oh, I like your place. Oh, thanks. It's rent controlled, so they keep trying to kick me out. Kind of drafty in here. You cold? No. Uh uh. Cheers. Cheers. Where'd you get it? I found it. It's so small. I think it looks like me. Really? Mm hmm. Nah, you're prettier. How about now? <laughs> yep, still prettier. <laughs> You think so? I do. I think you're just great. Because you know what's so great about you? You're real. You don't pretend like you got it all figured out. Like everyone else walking around life. You're real. You're genuine and you notice things too. You pay attention, like the monkeys. I don't know, I look at you and... I can see you. I see you. I don't know, I, I just think you're great. Thank you. I mean it, though. Seriously, I would have quit the zoo a long time ago if you didn't work there. <laughs> really. Thank you. Don't thank me. Just... Are you dating the winning conversations guy or what? No. You're not? Dating him? No. All right. Well, that's just checking because you never know. I wanted to ask you, um, so have you run into that giant mechanical guy walking around? I want to kiss you. What? I want to kiss you. Okay. That's your job's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah. I always look forward to seeing you. I do. You know what? Mm -mm. We should definitely hang out more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. I'd like that. Do you like silent films? Silent films? Mm -hmm. I love them. Really? Yeah. Well, they do the silent film program at the art house. house cinema. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Would you want to maybe go with me Friday night? Me and you. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought um, I could ask my sister and her husband if they want to join us. I already get to meet your sister. Wow. This is getting serious. Oh, I was just. No, no, no. It's good. It sounds great. Okay. And we don't have to get serious. No. Serious is good. I like serious. You do. With you, I do. Yes, Janice. Can I talk to you? Yeah, sure. What's up? I don't like my job. You don't? No. Uh, I'm better than selling drinks. OK. Um, what kind of a job do you want? Um, just something where I can think and make decisions. You said I was overqualified when you hired me. I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> did something happen to you? Yes. <laughs> yes, a lot happened to me. I can tell. Well, what about assistant habitat coordinator? I can do that. Good. Go do it. Thank you. Hang on. Janice. Oh, hey, Jill. Guess what? Hey, we're leaving at 6. We're doing what? Leave at 6 for dinner with Doug. You didn't forget, did you? Anyway, 6 o'clock. Hey. No, sorry, it was just my sister. The most important part. I said don't be vegetation. Try conversation. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I get what you're saying, but I'm just saying it's, it's different for guys. No, it isn't. Well, honey, sure it is. I mean, uh, women are just more cautious. Well, I think it depends on the woman. Maybe. Touche. Janice, what do you think? Oh, well, I wouldn't ask her. She hasn't had that much experience with guys. Right, Janice? What? Are you listening? Not really. I was just saying you haven't had many boyfriends. Excuse me, I'm going to the restroom. <laughs> well, hey, there's uh, there's this great little wine bar just down the street, maybe a nightcap? Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure Janice will say no. You know what? I think I might be able to convince her. Why don't you guys go ahead? Yeah? Yeah, I'll wait here for her, and uh, we'll walk down together. Right? Great. It's just around the corner. Great. <laughs> Where'd they go? You know what? They had the idea to go down the street for a little nightcap. But if you're not up for it, we can... No, that sounds great. Wow. OK, yeah, very cool. Oof. It's chilly out here, huh? Yeah, it's fine. You know, I can kind of, yeah. Oh, this weird robot dude, huh? Bling blade flat floor, take me to your leader. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Yeah. 
Doug, uh, Doug, please, stop. Oh. Oh, you're not feeling the vibe? No. <laughs> you need to loosen up. Have you seen Tim? Tim? No, he didn't come in today. Oh, that's weird. Assistant Habitat Coordinator. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Way to go, Janice. Thanks. I mean, I wonder what kind of outfit you'll be wearing. Pants, probably pants. Probably. Probably. Where's your friend? He'll be here. Yeah, because uh, the movie's about to start. Are you guys here for the movie? Yes. Okay, we're gonna be starting. They're gonna be starting. Like now. Okay, okay. Well, come on. Just... Come on, Tim. Doug. Hey, it's Jill. Doug, yes. Hey, man. Thanks so much for coming out. She's really fun. Ah, come on. It's all good. <laughs> She's going to be so happy to see you. <laughs> Janice, look who's here. Doug, what are you... What is he doing here? Janice, <clears throat> don't be rude. He came to see you. Ouch, Janice. <laughs> She's just upset because the zoo guy didn't show up, but she'll be fine. Right, Janice? You'll be fine. What are you doing? Come on, Janice, you're being weird. You just need a sense of accomplishment, Janice. Yeah. Or yoga. No, she just needs a new attitude because she's always so negative. Uh, you know, there is a chapter in my book on positive thinking. Every time I read it, it just it puts me in a really good place. See, that's what she needs. That's what you need. You need to read his book. No, I don't, Jill. I don't need his goddamn book. I don't need a goddamn thing. Whoa. Uh, okay. Just stop it, okay? Just stop. Stop with the books and, and the stupid dates and the stupid advice because I don't want it. 
I don't want any of it. Fine. What do you want, then? What? No, no, no. I'm just trying to help. You're, you're not helping, Jill. You're not helping me. Can't you see that? You're hurting me. Can't you see that you're hurting me? God, I just feel like... You should really read the book. Doug! Stop trying so hard! Janice? Please, he goes on and on! <laughs> okay, all right, everyone. Let's just calm down, please. Uh, Doug, let's, let's see if we'll lose a minute here. Why do you always have to be so weird? Stop talking to me like that, Jill. Please, I'm supposed to be the big sister. I'm supposed to be your big sister. Yeah. Yeah, but you just always... I mean, you're always talking down to me. No, I'm not. Yes, you are, Jill. Always, always talking down to me, telling me what I need, telling me what I'm doing wrong, all the time. I mean, I don't want what you want, Jill. I don't want what you want. Okay, fine. What do you want, Janice? What? I don't know. I don't know. Do I have to know? I mean, is the fate of the universe, like, why do I have to know? You know, why do I have to be something? Can't I just be myself? And isn't that just enough? I'm sorry, can you keep it down a little bit? Sorry, peace. <sighs> Janice. I'm just, I'm just worried about you. That's all, I just, I just feel like you're struggling and, and I wanna help. Okay, well, if you really want to help, then just be my little sister, okay? Can you do that? Can you just be my little sister? Yeah, thank you. Because the truth is, right now I could really use a sister. Okay. I think I'm... What? Come on, Dennis, you can tell me. I think I'm in love with him. Who? Tim. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And I'm confused because I don't understand. I mean, he was supposed to be here. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Janice. Come on, let's go home. I don't want to go home. No? No. I'm really embarrassed. I, I don't really want to see those guys. Okay. I kind of just want to be by myself for a little while. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. I'll get the boys. any extra change I would give it to you but can I ask you something when I saw you on television you said something about people feeling lost is that how you feel because sometimes sometimes I just feel invisible 
And I heard someone say something recently that it just takes one person, you know? Just one person to make you feel like you belong. To make you feel special. And I think that that's true. I know that that's true because, because I felt it. The other night, I was out with this guy that I work with, and I work at the zoo. And, and anyway, it was only for one night, but it just it felt different, you know? And now it's complicated. Tim? bring up some of our children. Come downtown and 